Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ziaul Hukmanim, the founder of Research Hub, and we are making a series of videos on Kava analysis. Okay, comparative importance improvement analysis, which we call in short Kava analysis. The method was proposed in this paper, cross-country comparison of operant resources in logistics outsourcing. And it's authored by me, my colleague, uh, Reddy, and my professor, Sebastian Kumar, and Hans Joachim Tram. So together, we worked on this uh, method, and we uh, published this method in this article. So you will find the details here. But we are making a series of videos to make it easy for people to understand and apply in their context of research. So in our context, it was in logistics outsourcing relationship, but it can be used in any context. It can be used for healthcare uh, sector side where you can look into the perspective of the doctors and the patients. It can be used in companies where you can look into the uh, perspective of the employees and the employers. So it can be done in any case, in the banks, customers, and the banking sector people. So it can be applied in any context where you are mainly looking into possibilities for improvement, okay? And basically there are two people, uh, two, two groups of people involved or two groups of parties involved. So, but in the first video of this series, I discussed about this method and how it is built on the importance performance uh, approach, okay? So we discussed that there are mainly three things we have to consider. One is the importance performance method, okay, analysis method, which was proposed by Martila and James in 1977. And then we first proposed importance improvement metrics, AB metrics or AB analysis. So we modified it and we proposed this first. So this one can be also, this AB approach can be used as a standalone method also, but then we further developed it and we proposed a comparative AB analysis or comparative importance improvement analysis. So here mainly we look into uh, the gap of importance from the two parties and the gap of Im improvement from the two parties. So, but first we are trying to understand a little bit more about this uh, importance performance. So here is the paper from James and uh, Martila and James. So it's a 1997 paper. I discussed this paper in the first video already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replicate this figure in Excel in this part of the tutorial, okay? So that's that's the main goal here. So here they collected data uh, using questionnaire. They send data uh, questionnaires to 634 in individuals who purchased car from a dealer between one and two years earlier, and they got 284 usable responses, which is about 45% uh, return. So that's pretty good, okay, after one follow-up. So these are the number of people who responded to their survey. And here you see the mean score of importance rating of these 14 factors and the mean performance rating of these 14 factors. These are the average values of the 284 people's responses, okay? So now the thing is, we don't have the actual data, right? So I will just try to replicate these mean values uh, and I will then try to replicate this figure in Excel, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some shortcut. I could actually try to copy this in Excel. Let's see if, if this copy is going to work. Let me see. So if I try to copy paste it here, it's not going to work most likely. No, it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the benefit from chat GPT. So I will take a screenshot of this and then I will now post it in chat GPT and provide in Excel table format. So this is just to make my life easier. I'm using ChatGPT here. You might have seen my previous videos where I talked about ChatGPT and I don't really use ChatGPT for writing, but I use it for talks, talks like this and also getting ideas and explaining, understanding things better, asking it to interpret different complex models and things like that. So now we can easily copy it from here, right? We can now very easily copy it from here and paste it here. It could be a good idea actually to also make sure that to kind of make sure that uh, the data is uh, same as what we have copied from the paper. So because chat GPT is okay, but sometimes it does things wrong. So I'll just paste it here and we'll have a quick look and I think it looks all right. So 
Now our goal is to replicate this figure, right? I will just take a screenshot of it in the corner so that uh, we know what, what is it that we are trying to make. We know that what is it that we are trying to make. So let's say I put it here in the corner. So I can uh, explain it briefly once again. So here we have the importance rating and the performance rating, right? So here you see on the vertical axis, we are mainly mapping importance. And on the horizontal axis, we are mapping performance. So here, these are the mean values of the importance rating and the performance rating. So the mean of means. So that's our uh, crosshair. This center point, we normally call, call it crosshair, right? So that's what we have there. So now here, when we plot them, so if you look into the, this, this, this group here, A, so what, what is the situation here? Here, it means they're extremely important. Their performance is fair. Okay, so performance is not excellent. So it means mean importance value is higher than the performance value. So that's why they're here. So it's highly important. We are lacking performance. So that's the gap. So that's the one where we should concentrate. For example, have a look at nine. Nine low prices on service. Okay. So if we have a look here, you see here our performance rating is lower than our uh, importance rating. So that's why nine is here. Also, if you look at one, performance is lower, right? Two also the same. Now let's look into exactly the opposite. So in the first video, I explained all of them, but here I will just quickly explain uh, this, this second one as well. So this situation here, here it's slightly important, not so important, but the performance is excellent. So it means importance score is low and performance score is very high. Okay. So let's have a look into 14. So here you see for 14, our performance score is higher than our importance rating. So we call this possible overkill. Okay. So that was the situation for 40. But now, so let's see how we actually make this figure in Excel. So before we go for Kaba, you know, we need to understand this. This is the basic model that based on what we build on. And these approaches is still very relevant. Okay. There are many studies using only this approach. So we need to understand this. So let us now first try to calculate the mean scores. So here I'm going to calculate average because we need these two values for our cross here. So this is the average for the overall importance and average or mean, whatever you call it. I usually prefer to use some boxes and colors and things like that. So it's easy for me to see uh, what I'm doing. Now, if I want to map it for me, uh, let's say if I try, try this way. So if I select all of them, yeah, or maybe if I select actually this one and this one, because we don't want to have all the names in the figure. We, if we have only one, two, three, four, we can actually figure it out. I go to insert, I go to recommended church. Uh, it is giving us something I want. We actually want a scatter plot. So we want a scatter plot. And our scatter plot should be something like this. So the second version of it. So it should be something like this. So I pick this one. Now, one of the first thing we have to do is we need to see what we have actually in which scale. So for example, here you see we have up to 3.5 and here we have up to 4.5, which in which one we have higher values. We have higher values comparatively on the importance rating. So we are having the importance on the most likely we are having 3.83 and 2.63, 3.83 and 2.8. The first one here. So it's actually the first one, right? Here we see 3.83, 2.63. So 3.83 is here, 2.63 is there. So we are having the performance rating on the y-axis and the importance rating on the x-axis. If we want to really make it like this, the one we, we see in the paper, so we act actually have to now flip it. So let's say if I go here and if I select the figure, if I go to select data, we no normally get this, right? Here we can click on edit. Here it's the series name is taking, taken from there. Here actually we can just say importance performance matrix. Okay. So the x-axis values, x-axis values are now taken from importance, right? But in our case, it should be taken from performance if we want to match exactly with the figure that we see here. So we select this one. Then for y-axis values, we should try to have it from here, right? To match with the figure that we have. And then, okay. And then, okay. And now we have the figure the way we would like to have it. 
it's always a very good idea to add the chart uh, axis titles. So for primary horizontal axis here, what is it that we are having here? So in the horizontal axis, we are having par performance. On, on, the, on the vertical one, we are having importance. Okay. Of course, now we just have plotted them like this, but we don't see the figure like this. So to convert the figure like the ones we have in the paper, we have to mainly set the, set the crosshairs, okay? To set the crosshairs, the easiest way is to click on uh, these axes, okay? So here I am clicking on the vertical one and I have this uh, format axis opened up on my right. So if I go here, I go to the axis options. So I'm looking into importance, right? So here the axis value. So if you might have it as automatic, so you just select here, axis value. Here you put 3.15. This is the mean from here, mean of all the importance rating, all the mean importance ratings mean, okay? And then we click here, and then here we are going to put the axis value to 2.82. So that's the mean of uh, all the values of performance. Since we are having the x-axis on the performance, so that's why we put this one here. So now I guess our figure is starting to look like the one we have here on the paper, right? We can, of course, do more formatting of it. So for example, if you click on this one again, uh, if you go to axis values, axis options here, you know, so axis bounds here, what is the minimum you want and the maximum you want? So let's say I want max minimum should be maybe one, 0.5. Now you will see it will, yeah, it looks a bit better now. And for this part here also, I will do the same. The minimum should be maybe something, let's say minimum should be around two. And I think it will already look much nicer. Yeah. Um, here you can set some designs from here. It's up to you. If, normally if you're doing it for a journal article, don't use don't use uh, very colorful ones because we don't want to put very colorful ones. But, but this one is that we have the figures. You know, we want to have also the, uh, the 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 attribute number next to each of the dots so that we can easily see which ones are where. So now, how can we do that? Otherwise, if we don't have the attribute numbers next to the dots, it will be hard for people to actually understand which one is what. Okay. So to do that, we can just click on the figure right? We can go to chart design. We can go here. We have the data level option. Here we can actually go to more data level options, okay? So when you come to this more data level options, I mean, we, yeah, we start to get the data levels here, but this is something we don't want. It's only one data point calling out here. So, but when you click here, you get these options here, data level options. So here we would like to now change something in a way that uh, so we don't want the y-axis values. We were showing the y-axis values. So we basically want to show each of the attribute numbers. And for that, we will go to value from cells. And then we click here and we will just select all these ones. That's it. So that's how we now have. So for example, here in the paper, you see 14 was here, 14 was here, 11, 12, 13 in this side, nine and so on. So that's how actually we can make this figure very much like the one we have in the paper. You can maybe also reduce it a little bit more to make it a bit better. So if I just double click here, so the minimum value, let's say if I make it 1.8, now it's much more like this. And then if we want to add this concentrate here and keep up the good work, we kind of have to add that manually here um, using inserting a text box. So we can just insert like a text box here. We can say A, concentrate here. So we select it, make it bold maybe. Then we just copy it and paste it a few times. Then we will say this one as B, keep up good work. Here we will say C, low, higher, ready. Here finally we have the D. We have it here, possible, over. So this is how now we have our improvement performance importance performance matrix, which looks exactly like what we had in the original paper, okay? Now we, yeah, we could remove it from here or we could just keep it, but this is our main main fear, right? Uh, one more thing you see now, maybe we have to actually try to group them, select all of them, right click, and then here is the group. So we have to group them. Otherwise, if I move one of them, not everything moves. Now everything moves together. Now we replicated the figure from the pay original paper. So this is very important to know because exactly this is how we are going to also build the importance improvement matrix and also when we are going to map the Kaba 
you know, comparative uh, importance improvement analysis metrics. So good luck. I hope you find it useful. So more videos will come on developing the importance improvement and also finally the comparative importance improvement analysis, the Kaba analysis. Bye-bye.